Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm coming up here on 30 this year. And if there's one thing that I can say is, you know, you're pretty much in trouble if you keep entering these mentalities of, I'm going to do this for this time frame to look good for the summer or to look good for a photo shoot or a wedding or whatever. Um, I almost come to find out that that's pretty much always going to backfire because you have this sort of end mentality of when you're going to stop that better, that, that better part of yourself sticking to, um, having good, good decisions, uh, having good uh, consistency on your decision-making when it comes down to your eating habits, your exercise habits. And so I can definitely stress without a doubt that doing this as a lifestyle is the only answer as opposed to you're, you're trying to get a certain result for a certain time frame. Um, have you seen any studies because I know you go through all kinds of studies um, that showcase at any point where a diet or a certain workout regimen for a certain time frame is actually beneficial long term, or is this pretty much a facade? So you do have, it, it depends on what you're looking for, okay? So you hear a lot about stuff like ketogenic diet, okay? So keto, keto yeah. Keto diet, diet, okay? So do you have some short-term results with that in terms of losing weight? Yes, you do. In the long run, can we say for sure in the long run that this is a, health, this is a healthy kind of diet? No, we cannot. Yeah. It doesn't matter whoever said that. We cannot say that in the long run is a healthy kind of diet, okay? What we know that in, around the world, you have some areas called the blue zones. Those blue zones are areas where you have a great number of centenarians that are part of this society, okay? So people that are at least 100 years old. So you, you have, for example, uh, one of those uh, blue zones is uh, Ikaria in Greece. Okinawa in Japan, uh, you have a certain place in um, Sardinia in Italy, you have a, a place in Costa Rica, okay? And for the surprise of many people, you have actually a city in the US that actually is among those blue zones. And this city is called Loma Linda. It's a small town of maybe 40,000 people in California. Okay. Now, what do we find in common about those particular places? They have a very large ingestion of vegetables, all kinds of vegetables, okay? They have very small ingestion of uh, animal products, okay? They are part of a society that feels like they have purpose in life. They, uh, when they are, they, they, they spend time with family and friends regularly, okay? So we see that there are some common traits that you find in all those places where you have people that live long lives and apparently healthier kind of lives. Yeah. So there are some things that we can learn here. So in terms of diet, they are active people, in terms of physically speaking, but they are not people that are in the gym doing strength training necessarily, yeah. okay? They are people that are active throughout their day. So they keep active. They do, uh, you know, physical work during their, their day, and they are not just sitting the whole day in front of a computer. Uh, they eat tons of vegetables, okay? That's the base of their diets. They eat very little of animal products. Hmm. So there you go. We do have some nice clues here, right there, just looking at this particular place. Yeah. Okay, so we could say, and, and obviously there are many, many researches 
where you can find the evidence that uh, a diet filled with fruit and vegetables is going to improve your health. Yeah. This is a fact, okay. If you reduce saturated fat in the long run, you will improve your health. And most of the saturated fat is found in animal products. So you do have some clues. Okay, now you will have people saying any kind of a stuff uh, about diet, but we gotta look at the at the facts. You've got to look at the studies, you've got to look at the the facts in terms of where people um, live the most, live the longest, and, and then you will find the real clues there. And so I know that you've been a vegan for, was it over 10 years now? It's close to 20 years, yes. 20 years, two decades, wow. Not yet, 20 years. Um, and so as you probably know, Brandon, the other owner of the podcast, is vegan as well, a vegan chef, as a matter of fact. And so he's got his vegan cookbook, he's working on vegan recipes and different collaborations with restaurants. Um, what made you want to do the flip 20 years ago? Before it was even a cool thing to do and become vegan and cut out the animal products. Like what was the initial set that, that, that got you to cross over? Well, so pretty much what happened was I could see that my body did not respond as well as uh, used to when I was hitting 40 years old. So I was, you know, hitting 40 years old and I could see that uh, there were some things. I mean, I was not sick, but I had regular headaches. So I had uh, migraines at least a couple of times a week. Yeah. Uh, my digestion was not the greatest. Um, so always there was something about my digestion that was not good. Uh, I was starting to add fat in my body. So there were some things that I could tell that was not really working as well as it used to. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew that I had to make some changes. So, you know, being somebody that was always involved in the health and fitness uh, world, I knew that uh, what I ate made a difference. So the more I studied, the more I read, the more I, you know, talk, uh, you know, thought about things, the more I was convinced that something had to change. Um, and, uh, and I was not willing to start taking drugs. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. So yeah, that's a possibility, and that's what a lot of people choose. So I chose to change my lifestyle instead of start taking drugs. So drugs for me was not really an option. Uh, so I went with the one that seemed the most plausible for me, and it was to change my lifestyle, and that included to to change some eating habits. And so. At this point, would you say your research plus the lifestyle choices have pushed you in the direction where being vegan or going vegan, do you think that's for everybody or do you think that's a case-by-case -case situation? So that's a good question. Uh, I'm not the type that comes around saying, you've got to become a vegan, you've got to become a vegan. Yeah. Uh, even though... I do believe that a vegan lifestyle is very healthy. What I do tell people is you got to cut on animal products. You've got you to gotta really cut on uh, simple carbs, refined carbs. Um, so you've got to make some real changes. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody comes to me and say, well, once in a while, you know, I eat a little beef. Once in a while, I have a little cheese. Or I have, you know, once in a while, some eggs. Okay, it may be all right for that person, okay? I'm not saying that this person will have to cut every single thing. Now, most people, on the other hand, they actually, if they don't go radically, they have a real hard time knowing what's a little. Yeah. 
Okay? So when they say I have a little of this, it means I have one meal per day that contains that. Yeah. So that's not a little. Of yeah. This. Okay. So if you actually look at the average person, the average person can be in the U.S. or Brazil or anywhere in the world. This person pretty much will have saturated fat, okay, in every single meal that they eat. And I'll so, give you an example. yeah, please do. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So let's imagine the person wakes up in the morning and the person, you know, eats some eggs. There is saturated fat. Or eats some cheese uh, with their bread or some butter. Uh, or a glass of milk, okay? Saturated fats there. Yeah. Then they go for their uh, midday snack and they have a yogurt, saturated fat is there. Then they go for their lunch and they have a ham and cheese sandwich, saturated fat is there. Yeah. Now, mid afternoon, and they are going to have some kind of, uh, you know, um, a cake or, or a, a a type of uh, of uh, croissant or anything like that that also you know involves butter and yeah. milk and things like that. Dinner they go for a steak because you know I didn't eat the steak, so I think I, I think I'm doing well because I didn't eat meat before. But that's not true. I eat saturated fat the whole day, and mm -hmm. I'm ending the day with more saturated fat. Yeah, that's the problem. So because of this um, difficulty that people have to actually know what's little, sometimes I tell people, dude, just cut the stuff, go with the vegetables, go with the whole grain cereals, grains, uh, with the beans, with all this good stuff, you know? And uh, maybe if you're in a special dinner, uh, at a special occasion for a special occasion. Okay, then you may have a little bit of a, a beef or something that you enjoy, or maybe a fish once yeah. in a while. But the bottom line is most people have a hard time actually um, being able to control what is little. All right, thanks for watching this clip from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch the full episode, go ahead and check out us at appropriateculture.com. You can also check us out on the social media platforms at Appropriate Culture. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.